So we're on, people. We're on. Welcome. N nobody's watching it as far as I can see, but you're on. Wow, there's the sun. Look at the sun. And the birds. Oops, that's a selfie and I didn't want that. There we go. I was just trying to get the focus here. So we have people coming in here from Australia, from Malaysia, from Alaska, oh my goodness. from uh, Norway. Oh, sorry, I got to turn to your camera no, there. Fine. From Norway, from South Africa, from all over. And today, people, we have real people here, not just virtual people. We have real people here with big smiles, pilgrims from the Buckeyes. I got that right today. And they got up bright and early because they want to do a marriage renewal here at Duke and Altum afterwards. So we're very happy about that. And they're staying up the road, so they had to get here as well. Oh, by the way, people, can you look up there over the Mount of Olives, uh, the Mount of Beatitudes, Mount of Olives, the Mount of Beatitudes, and you can see behind the ridge of the Mount of Beatitudes, you can see Mount Hermon. Can you see it? Yeah. Let me get our people here on the, so they can see it on the screen here. It's peeping up behind that ridge of the Mount of Beatitudes. So you can see Mount Hermon from here. And you see that little bump that's over here. You see where the blue, the purple heron is on the, on the little dock there in the water. And if you go that direction over the Golan, a little bit to the left of that, there's a little ridge sticking up over over the Golan there, and that's actually inside the border of Syria today. And if you look down here, you can see Jordan. So look at Tiberias, and then you have the Golan here. And if you look down at the very end, there's another ridge down there that's independent of the Golan. There's the valley, that's Jordan. And if you look uh, up north, northwest, you can see mountains sticking up over where the airplane is. Let's see if we get the airplane here for our live stream people. There it is dipping down. Uh, there you have, the, those mountains are actually looking into Lebanon. So on Mount Hermon is, is in, the, in the intersection between Israel, Lebanon and, uh, and um, Syria. So there we are. So here we have these guys here. These are the younger pilgrims of the group here. Two brothers and the families here. What part of Ohio are you guys from? Dayton. Dayton, Ohio. And Cleveland. And Cleveland. So Dayton is the home of the Wright brothers, right? Yeah. And then you have Wright State University. Yes. And the University of Dayton. Yeah. And then some people said that they were at the at the right university but the wrong state. Right. Yes, <laughs> you were correct. <laughs> I remember that about six or seventeen years ago. I learned that. Yep. I was there. I used to I used to be chaplain in Northern Kentucky University. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So I was doing uh, also you know you know chaplaincy work for different students in different places around. Very good. So here we are today, people. Delighted to have people experiencing the live stream. We're going to walk a little bit here so they can see something else here, another angle on the, on the sunrise stroll and chat. And they're all getting their pictures here as well, their sunrise pictures. So today we have uh, challenging readings, really big stuff. And I think the backdrop of our readings is that uh, St. Paul is so deeply struck by, by Jesus. His whole experience, the road to Damascus, which is just up there. You know, we're closer here to Damascus than we are to Jerusalem. Oh, yes. It's just up there in that direction. And there was actually a guy who used to, uh, who told us a few years ago here, he, he used to, when he was a kid, he was growing vegetables with his dad and fruit. 
and they would drive one day to sell them in Beirut, in Lebanon, and they'd drive from here another day to sell them in Damascus. And another day they would drive to Tel Aviv. So just to give you a feeling of how close these places are. Oh, there we have it. Look at that, people. Look at that. Look at that screen. You know? This is very, very, uh, very, very beautiful. Actually, if you keep walking, you'll get different things. Yesterday was just one mass of gold, like very uniform. As the, the light was extraordinary. Yesterday was an incredible feast of light. And that's Mount Arbel with all the caves up there. I often go walking up there with the sunrise stroll and chat along Mount Arbel. All those who are participating here know that on the live stream. And then and, uh, let's, go, let's go down this direction a little bit here to get the, the trees or give a nice effect with the, with the images. So Paul is very taken by the new life in Christ. And today we're getting an expression of what that means for our moral life. That we are taken into new life in Christ, a redemption that uh, gives us a whole new angle on life and how it affects everything in our lives, also our bodies. We are one, our body and our soul. We are one person and when we're taken into Christ, everything is taken in. But of course, there's a, a rebellion inside of us. There's a challenge, a conflict, and we need to be on top of it. We have a big task, a big, a big responsibility for the way we behave. Our behavior is linked to our faith in Christ. Our, we are living now in the presence of God and our whole lives have to be, are, are called in, are taken into this. But it's a tough challenge to live a holy life, a life in God. And today's world makes it also a challenge. It was always a challenge. But it's today, with all of the degradation, there's a, a, a big challenge to live a holy life. A lot is telling us that it's okay to do all kinds of things that our faith does not allow us to do. The, the dignity we have in our body. We have been raised from the dead, spiritually. Our body is still in that struggle. The new life we have. So look at it. you can get your pictures there with the leaves, people. Look at that. So it, it gives you a nice effect. And we do that, we want to live holy lives uh, in the freedom of grace uh, because we love God, we love Christ. It's a, a life of redemption and love. In a way, the battle is won. We have that beautiful verse from the Psalm today. Psalm 124, our help is in the name of the Lord. And our experience in life, little by little, when you're 12, you know, you're starting out, but even as 12 year old, but all through life, when you go through big challenges and big difficulties, um, the person of faith is acquiring experience and realizing, wow, I came through that, through that operation, through that difficult economic time, through that very great difficulty in our family or in our society. Imagine people, immigrants, that have to, to travel to other countries in, in great need. I think most of uh, our peoples were immigrants at some point. You know? In our case, in Ireland, it wasn't that so much, but it was the oppression we had politically. And our families came through very hard times, the potato famine and all these situations. You know? So 
uh, they become also part of ethnic and national and cultural memory. And when we when we have a fresh a fresh experience of that, um, then it becomes more powerfully present personally. But our help is in the name of the Lord. To to gain this experience is more important than gaining a college degree. That you can say from your heart to your grandchildren, our help is in the name of the Lord. But I think first of all to say it to yourself. Gosh, I would never have handled that without God's help. And as we grow older in life, probably that's the greatest wisdom, you know, the greatest graduation. Here, somebody else is getting the sunrise. It's amazing. There's, there's enough in the sunrise for everybody to take pictures. <laughs> we don't have to own it for ourselves only. <laughs> and then the gospel is very interesting because Jesus starts talking about accountability for our lives. When the master comes back, the master is Christ. And when he comes again, that we're accountable. And, um, and Peter says, well, is that for us as well? And Jesus said, in first place is for you because you received the gift of so much grace, so much gift, so much responsibility for the community. So all of us, imagine parents have a big responsibility. And then, and not to mention grandparents. <laughs> and, and then obviously all those involved in ministry every baptized person, what a gift we have received in baptism. And the more we have received, the more responsibility we have, the more grace, the more friendship with God. And then we need to pray for everybody. That's why we pray a lot also for those in our communities that have responsibility, like we pray a lot as Catholics for the Holy Father. We pray a lot for our bishops, our priests, our, uh, all those teaching the faith. It's a, it's a big responsibility. Here, actually, we have very interesting uh, different uh, churches represented. This is a very interesting group here. So we have Anabaptist, right? And we have Brethren. That's Anabaptist. And then we have Southern Baptist. And then we have uh, Nazarene. And we even have Catholics. Can you imagine? If there were more Catholics here, I would ask if there were some of them were sleepy Catholics or refrigerated Catholics or deep frozen Catholics. They seem to be very interested as they want to renew their wedding vows today. Hello. Or Christers. Christers. What's Christer? Christmas and Easter attendees. Ah, Christers. That's a new word for me. I'm always learning new words in Hebrew and other languages. That's a new word in English. Christers. <laughs> Christmas and Easter attendees. <laughs> I don't think they're here in this group, but they're referring to them as another category. <laughs> okay, doc. So we've had um, a, this special encounter this morning. Do you want to say anything about your experience in the Holy Land? Because you're among the first pilgrims coming back after this drought of pilgrims. We had a year and a half without pilgrims. Do you have any? Look at all the birds dancing. Thousands of birds dancing. They're dancing for you. They said, the pilgrims are back. We need to rejoice. <laughs> They're up over us now, but I'm going to be careful with the Osmo since it danced around so much yesterday. <laughs> so here, I think we are still pondering in the depths of our hearts the richness of the experience of the pilgrimage. So we leave it like that for today, right? But everybody is being blessed, I know that for a fact. And today you're off to to the Dead Sea. And then and then Jerusalem. Fantastic. Two a uh, couple of days in Jerusalem afterwards. Fantastic. So people, I thank you very much for joining us this morning. And uh, we'll say goodbye soon. We'll get everybody in a selfie type of picture here. <laughs> Waving here for you from the Sea of Galilee. <gasps> Ohio sends greetings to the whole world, <laughs> to Australia and Alaska and South Africa and California. Wow. And there goes Moshe. <gasps> Thank you.
So people, thank you very much. See you later, alligators. On this beautiful sunrise at the Sea of Galilee.